friends, I'm the Earth. Yes, yes, the planet where you live. And today, I've woken up especially sad. Do you know why? Because I dreamt that water pollution increased so much and that all living beings that live in the oceans, seas and rivers disappeared. And even though it was only a dream, I can assure you that if you don't stop contaminating water, very soon, this dream will become a reality. The pollution of the water really worries me, and even more so if we take into account that three quarters of my surface are covered by it. Although I call myself the Earth, if you saw me from space, you would see I am more like water. In fact, I am known as the Blue Planet. Everyone knows that water is indispensable for life. Without water, neither plants or animals would exist, and neither would you, the human beings. However, many people continue to throw rubbish, bottles and furniture into seas and rivers, as if they were containers used to get rid of anything you don't want. In many homes, liquids like oil and dirty products are thrown down the drain that mix with water, and this extremely contaminated water travels through pipes to rivers and seas. Also, there are many companies that pour chemical products down drains that cause lots and lots of pollution and kill many aquatic animals. Here, you can see this seal eating a plastic bag thinking it's food. We don't know if the poor thing will survive. Or this dead frog killed by pollution. Another great enemy that covers my surface is oil. You can't imagine the damage it has done to the seas and oceans. The sinking of ships that transport oil have provoked great catastrophes. Only time is capable of fixing. But with this I don't want to make you feel sad. Because as bad or as complicated as things appear, there is always a solution. Furthermore, I am sure that if you help me, working together as a team, we will make sure the water becomes clean once again, and that the living beings that live in it are safe. A way in which you can help is by collecting your waste when you go on a trip and never ever throw it into the sea or a river. Another way is not to throw oil or other liquids like paint down the drain. Also, we can encourage our relatives and friends to improve their habits and start to think more about the importance of ending water pollution. Caring for water is caring for life. Therefore, you have a great responsibility. I need the help of every one of you in order to be healthy. If you look after the water, you look after nature and all human beings, I am convinced that together we are going to make sure that my sad dream does not become a reality. Because as you know, changing the world is child's play. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends and welcome to another new Happy Learning video. Today, we will learn all about the water cycle. Earth, which is the planet we live on, is known as the blue planet because as much as three quarters of the planet's surface is water. And water is so very important because without it, there would be no life. Without it, these sweet little otters wouldn't exist. All these playful bears nor this conceited bird, or even us, the human beings. That is why we must look after it, conserve our water well, and most of all, we must maintain our rivers and oceans clean. Did you know water never stands still, but is in always constant movement? This water movement is what we call water cycle. Now, let's learn more about it. When the sun warms the water on the Earth's surface, it evaporates, converting itself into water vapor. 
and it begins its incredible journey, flying into the sky, up towards the atmosphere. This first stage of its journey is known as evaporation. When the water converts in vapor, it rises towards the atmosphere, then cools down, transforming itself into cloud. The second stage of its journey is called condensation. Once the water has condensated and turned into a cloud, it continues its amazing journey by being blown by the wind, traveling from one place to another. Clouds are actually tiny little drops of water suspended in the air. But when the clouds grow, they collect more and more water. These water drops then crash into each other and become bigger drops of water. Then, at some point, they will end up falling to the ground in the form of rain or even snow. This stage of the water cycle is called precipitation. The water which falls to the ground, which precipitates in the form of either rain or snow, may land in rivers or even on the ground to then seep through to subterranean currents of water. All this water must continue its long journey, covering vast amount of distances until it finally reaches the sea. When it arrives at the big blue sea, it will once again begin the process. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. That is why it's called the water cycle, because it forms a never-ending circle. Isn't the water just so incredible? Imagine how much fun it would be to be a drop of water. You could fly up, then travel around the world before you fall down and do it all over again. Well, that's it for now. Until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends and welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to learn about the wettest animals on the planet. Presenting the fish. In almost all the places where you can find water, be it either salt water or fresh water, you can also find fish. There are fish of all sorts of sizes, shapes and colors, and yet they all have common characteristics, which you should know. Fish are vertebrates. Their skeleton is made up of bones or cartilage. They are also cold-blooded. Their temperature is not constant, meaning it depends on the water temperature. This fish looks really cold. All fish have extremities in the form of fins, as you can see in this image. Dorsal fins, caudal fins, which is the tail, pectoral fins, pelvic fins, and anal fin. Another really important fact that one must remember is that almost all fish are covered in scales. The gills are the fish's respiratory organ. The respiration process is very interesting. Water enters through the mouth and goes to the gills. The gills then collect the oxygen and distribute it to the rest of the body through the blood vessels. Then the water is expelled through an opening which can be found in the majority of the fish behind their head, which is called the gill flap. Fish reproduce by laying eggs. Therefore, they are oviparous, and their fertilization can be either external or internal. Some fish are excellent fathers, like this one who protects his babies inside his mouth. He looks as if he's going to eat them, but he's actually protecting them. Look at that! Isn't it amazing? Almost all fish are carnivores, eating other fish smaller than themselves, and therefore they each have different ways of defending themselves. The most common action to take is when feeling threatened is to escape as fast as possible, as in to swim away rapidly. But there are other ways of defending themselves that are much more original. For example, this clownfish finds hiding himself among these venomous enemies 
Others imitate or camouflage themselves with their background by obtaining the color and shape of the plants and rocks around them. Can you see this fish in the image? Oh, well there was indeed a fish and a very hungry one. Look at this. This is the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Even though it is called a whale shark, you must remember it is actually a shark, not a whale. Whales are not fish. They are aquatic animals, like these friendly dolphins. So never forget, whales and dolphins are not fish, but mammals. Now I have a very important fact you must always remember. It's extremely important. As you already know, fish, as well as many other animals, live in the water. Water is essential for life. And for this reason, we must look after it. We must protect it. There are people who dirty nature by throwing rubbish into the rivers and oceans without thinking about their terrible consequences they're causing. The plastics and substances which contaminate the water kill a huge amount of fish. Turtles, dolphins, whales, sharks, and many more die every day because of contamination. Water is a source of life. We must take care of it and protect it. So now you know. Look after nature and all living things, and they can live happily. Goodbye, friends. Until next happy learning video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello, friends. Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Look at these images. Do you like the rain? Well, it's true that sometimes it can be a bit annoying. But what about how beautiful everything looks after it rains? The colors look new. The air is purer. Hmm. How good it smells. And everything looks cleaner and brighter. When it rains, everything is full of life. Because water is life. Just check out how this little bird loves water. Can you imagine if this were no longer the case? That the rainwater, instead of cleaning things, would be dirtying them? Ugh. Yeah! Or that instead of giving life, it would sicken and destroy everything it touches? Sadly, this is already happening. This terrible rain exists. It is created by us human beings with the smoke from the cars and boilers and gases from factories. All this dirty, toxic air goes up into the atmosphere and mixes with clouds. It gets into the water droplets that form from them, turning them into droplets of polluted water, into droplets of acid rain. That is why this rain, so harmful and dangerous, is called acid rain. Even its name is scary, isn't it? This rain is so bad that when it falls on the earth, it causes real disasters in nature. It dries plants, destroys soil nutrients, poisons the water of rivers and lakes, and makes many animals sick and die, like this huge fish or this little frog. What a pity! Yes, the chemical compounds in acid rain are so harmful that they can even make statues and buildings look ugly and spoiled. What a shame! I can just imagine what you're thinking. If acid rain is capable of destroying stone, what can we do to stop it? Well, actually, an enormous amount. Because, as we are always saying in Happy Learning, the health of the planet is everyone's responsibility. With small measures, we can make huge changes. For example, if we choose to take the school bus or bike, or 
if we put on a sweater instead of turning on the heating? Or if we recycle waste in its corresponding containers, we pollute the air less. And with less pollution rising into the atmosphere, the clouds will be clean again and the rain will be pure water again. Goodbye, acid rain! But as you know, this can only be achieved with everyone's participation. So let's get to work. Let's take care of our planet. And now I'm off to jump into puddles because it looks like it's going to rain. Goodbye, friends. Until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello, friends. I am the Earth, your planet. And I want to talk to you about the ground, which is really important, and yet we rarely take it into consideration. The ground, which you walk on every day, is my most superficial part. It's where your houses are built on, your schools, and also the roads on which you travel. It's where rivers run along, plants grow on, and animals live on. How do you think the ground was made? Well, it was a very long process, taking millions of years, and is still continuing, in which some really strong workers are involved. The sun, the wind, the water, and living things. Rocks, which at the beginning made up my surface, bit by bit began to crack, breaking into smaller pieces because of the strength of these workers. This mixture of different minerals grew richer with organic matter coming from plants and dead animals. It takes a hundred years to obtain just one centimeter of soil. The result of all this process gives us a surface where life can live, full of wonderful creatures. We must look after our ground just as we are maintaining our air clean as well as our water because it's imperative for living things for them to be able to eat as well as to have a place to live. And there are so many dangers which in a very short time can transform fertile land into a desert where it is impossible for life to thrive. Forest fires as well as cutting down large amounts of trees are examples of how the soil is left defenseless. Without the help of the roots from trees and plants in the ground, rainwater and wind wipe away the nutrients in the soil. This is called erosion, and when this occurs, nothing will be able to grow there again. The same thing happens when toxic products are thrown on the ground, killing living things and contaminating the water that flows underground, making the land sterile. Without healthy soil, it is impossible to have a healthy life. So we must look after it all together. The ground you walk on is the ground which allows you to live. It is for this reason that we must help maintain it clean and respect it by never throwing rubbish on it. If we keep it clean, I, the Earth, your house in the universe, and all living things which live on me will be a lot happier. Because, as you know, children can make a world of difference. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.